Alright, welcome everyone to episode 3 of Pistol Starts. Today I will show you how I train aiming and how I see, uh, how my philosophy is about aiming and training it. Um, if you don't know me, I'm uh, Pistola Time. I'm the IGL for E United, professional PUBG team. Um, yeah. If you have any questions, you can ask in chat right now or um, during the stream. And if you're looking from YouTube, you can just leave a comment or join my Discord and send me a message there. All right, let's start it up. So first, <clears throat> aiming, training and your aim. You guys have probably seen um, this map, which is super good to train your aim. You've probably already went into it, took some guns and started shooting. But then <clears throat> you may you might have re you might have realized that <clears throat> it's got it gets kind of boring and you don't really get you don't really have anything to do. You start shooting targets from far from long range, but it doesn't feel maybe a complete like you don't feel like you accomplish anything by doing this. I personally I don't, so I I always need to put myself um, into little games or. Just mindlessly shooting at at a at a wall just does I don't I just don't doesn't work for me, right? Any targets or something. So first of all, <clears throat> I'll show you how I see aiming in this game. Let me just open up paint. Give me a sec. I'll show you what I mean. All right. So first of all, this game, this guy that just punches, just shoots me. I'm just gonna hide. Is annoys me the noise. Okay. Display capture. Okay. <clears throat> so for me, this game, um, you can divide this game into like three main categories. Uh, the first one, wait, I'll just here. Yeah. Okay. So three categories. The first one is strategies, right? Second category would be like the communication with your teammates. And the third category, which is what we're going to focus on today, is aiming, right? Or shooting. Aim slash shoot. Right? This is like what we want to talk about. Why do I divide things like that? I think that dividing is is the most important thing to to get better at whatever you want to do. If you want to get better at aiming, this is you don't really know where to start. Do you want to get better at sniping? You want to get better at I don't know, full auto? Most people when they talk about aiming, it's either one of those. It's either they want to get better at full autoing or they want to get good at m longer ranges. This is like the two things that exist in PUBG. There's also a medium range which you can either just probably just use single tap which is similar to sniping. So let's say you want to get better at full auto, right? Uh, we'll call that full auto. This is how I see it. I try to divide everything as much as I can and take every single little aspect of full loading and then I train every single one of them separately so when you see a target there's what I will call first pre-aiming the pre-aim is where your crosshair is gonna be before you even see that target right <clears throat> is it gonna be do you are you expecting a target to be at a window are you just not expecting anything? If you're not expecting anything, do you keep your target? Do you 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 do you keep your crosshair like on looking down? Do you do like this when you when you walk? Do you do like this? Do you do in between, or do you actually look at level? Looking head level is like the one of the most important thing in PUBG and CS:GO and any other FPS. You look where you think your enemy is gonna peek from. If you think uh, if you know that there's a there's a door here, let's say, and you know that your enemy is going to peek the door. If you're looking like this and then you peek and it's hard to flick and then go to the to your target if you see him. So but if you already know uh, the door is approximately at this level and you're already doing this, 
you're already at head level, and then you are, you just won a lot of time by just pre-aiming at the good at the good level. So pre-aiming is super important. I will go over this how to train or pre-aiming a bit later. Pre-aiming, and then you have what I'll call either flick, flicking to your target, or like target acquisition. It's a bit. You see your target, and then you have to. Um, you have to react to it, right? So let's say there's a target that appears, and then you gotta you gotta target. Let's say you're expecting him at this door, but instead he already ran in. So you gotta flick perfectly to his head, and then start shooting. Um. Obviously, there are two ways of shooting of moving your aim. With the wrist, actually, there's three. There's three ways of moving your 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 aim. There's uh, the finger. Now I'm just using my finger. This is only my fingers. Then there's the wrist for the bigger movements. And then there's the arm for move bigger, bigger movements. For like flicks where you need to move around like this. Do 180s. So like you flick and then you do a little wrist movement. And then you can do a little, uh, little finger movement. You can do all at the same time. <clears throat> what else? Then after you start shoot, you start... You have to start clicking and then you have to recoil control. So how do you actually train recoil control? I'll go over this. How do you how do you get better at recoil control? My general phil philosophy about this is just I do what I call what a uh, a TS I think it was a TSM player coach for um for League of Legends. He called this I plus one. I being me, or you, and plus one being the one thing you want to add. So let's say you want to get better at pre-aiming, then you're going to play a game where the only thing you think about is pre-aiming. It's the only thing you'll think about. You'll, always, you'll only think about your crosshair. You'll do everything else normally, whatever you do. Do you, like, if you use single tap most often, like, Let's say you're just using single tap. But the, you think only about where your aim is going to be. And then the rest you just do whatever you normally do. <clears throat> this is what you're going to do for every single thing you want to get better at. You're going to do I plus one. You want to get better at communication. You do everything normally, but communication, where you only think about communication. And this way, you'll be able to train all the, these little blocks right there. You'll get better at this block first. Then you'll get better at this one. Then you'll get better at this one. And then after that, you can train them all together. And then you'll, get, you'll be able to full auto correctly and better. But if you just try to full auto, and you're like, I'm just going to shoot everyone. And then you don't think about, whoa, what did I just do? I just opened up another stream lab, another desktop. What? How did I do this? Wait, I gotta. F what the fuck? Um. Windows key, control and left arrow. Oh my god! I was what? The, I've never seen that. Haha. <laughs> I just opened up another another desktop. What the? That's this is so weird. I'm so lost right now. All right. <coughs> well, okay. To go back at what we were saying, I created a little. A little document. Here that I'll, uh, I can post it in chat if you guys are interested. Um, now this is mine. Okay, this one. 
I will get a shareable link. If you guys are interested. This is my training that I do and I use CSGO to do it. So you can follow all the little uh, all the little settings if you want to get it right. There's a certain map that you need to download. Um and this is this website that I use. It's called Mouse Sensitivity. Helps you uh, get use the sensitivity you want from pub, let's say PUBG to CS:GO. So you just use this. You you gotta buy it though. It's like three dollars. There's another way of doing it that is explained if you don't want to pay three dollars for this website. And then you do CS:GO, Counter Strike, and then you enter your DPI, your sensitivity. So you go in game FPP, and then you go fire. So let's say I use twenty six. My FOB is one o three, and then you want a one o three cent. Uh, you want also one o three on CS:GO. So you'll do this one o three, and then it's gonna tell you FOV CS debug. So that's something that you need to input into CS:GO if you want it to have it. If you want the same FOV and just build up your muscle memory a bit better. So you open up CSGO. And you do this, so you, you open up your map that is called Drain Aim CSGO 2 Dark. You can find it in the... In the workshop, in a sec whatever class okay something that you need to do is um to put wait let me remember okay yeah round time okay mp round time so you just put 99 so it's gonna put an infinite round or almost and then you can do mp underscore end warm up so because right now you're in a warm up or just end warm up. Warm up and so dumb. I keep forgetting those things. MP underscore warm up and okay, there you go. So there's two types of training that I do in this one. And uh, one of them is really really hard, but it's thoughts. Why do you tell everyone the secret? I think it's time. We need better PUBG players, right? So the first one, the easiest one, is gonna be zero delay and 0.5 seconds static target duration. And then if it's too hard, you can just play with the target size. I put 10 arc because 10 arc is a pretty good. It's a pretty good one. Um, right now I feel like my game is not in full screen, so give me one sec. Um, it is in full screen. It's a bit laggy though some reason I think it's laggy since I opened up that second fucking desktop oh it's better alright so you just hit start and then you just aim at the target That's what you do for there's gonna be a hundred target. So you just do this. This is one of the this is one of the training. There's easier trainings that um that I've put into my uh this. If you look at different trainings right there, I I divided them into different trainings right there. <clears throat> with little goals that you need to achieve before changing. So there's a normal one that I just showed you with 10R or 8R for this size. And then there's the expert and champion one that I, I called them expert and champion, which is like, um, I wrote inside the, the little document that, I don't know why it's so laggy. I can't aim like this. I think it's the display capture. Display capture is 
I hide it and I get better FPS. It's so weird. If I game capture it, yeah, and now I get better FPS. Okay, so you'd put 0.25, 0.25, right? This is obviously going to be extremely hard. Because you only have 20, 250 milliseconds to flick to your target. But the thing is, by doing this, you're training super fast. Even if you suck at it, even if you get zero, this is a really, really good way to improve moving your mouse. So it's going to make it so that you have a better pre-aiming. You're going to be able to flick to targets better. But it's also going to make it so that you're going to be able to move around the map better. Because you'll be able to move your mouse way more efficiently. Let's reduce the volume a little bit. First, there we go. And you start. And you're probably just not gonna even hit one the first time you try this. And I haven't actually trained with this map a while, so in a while, so I'm probably not gonna hit anyone. Anyone. But just doing this right now improves a lot of different things. It improves your reaction time, it improves your mouse grip, because you gotta go fast, so your hand on your mouse will change when you do this a little bit for the better. You're gonna take a more comfortable grip. And I'm always close to the target, but I never hit one. I think my record is like 10 or something or 12. So yeah, you just keep doing this. This is a really good method to get better at, at aiming, flicking and pre-aiming, moving around the map. <clears throat> so this is, this is one of the method that I use. I use CSGO to do this. Right. And after you played a couple games, you go a couple, uh, couple CSGO training map. Go back into PUBG. This is important. You need to go back into PUBG and start playing at least a game or two in PUBG so that you get used to what you just did. So that the muscle memory just sinks in. And it links it to PUBG. So normally you'd go, you'd go do some HUD drops or something like that. You can even do training mode, I guess. Why is there a queue time for training? Well, that's kind of weird. So yeah, the first step would be <clears throat> going into CSGO, doing that map training, and figuring out where you are right now. That's the first step. That's the first way that I got better at, at aiming. Then lately I've been doing something else because I kind of got tired of the dots so I had to start doing something else that I will show you right now and I will explain why I'm doing it. So I think any gun with a red dot. I use an AR because it just feels better. Area, you take a couple bullets if you want to take bullets and then you go basically anywhere you want you can go here for example but um i like going north weird because no one's gonna shoot you there no one's gonna annoy you no one's gonna try to run you over with their bikes Like I said, if you have any question, just ask and ask them in chat. All right, so I go here. You can do this anywhere, but you see those points right there? I try to aim at those points right there. Thanks for the follow, companion man. So. 
<clears throat> I aim at those points like that. Why do you think... Maybe you think this is stupid? It doesn't look like I'm doing anything. I'm just looking at points like that. Um, so let's say you're running into a map. I'll show you why it's important. Let's say you're running into a map. There's two different things that you're going to do. Let's say... When you, when you see someone... See, you flick with... That's just a little wrist flick. See? You just... Flick to the wrist. Flick with the wrist, and I know approximately how much I need to flick to get there. See? I'll just do this. And I can do this. And I can flick back and forth to targets. So I can... So I can maneuver around little corners like that. And I can aim correctly at the good places. Then there's the second one, which is moving around with your arm. So you move around with your arm, and then you do a little wrist movement. That's it. Move around, wrist movement. Move around, wrist movement. Move around, wrist movement. Move around, up, ahead. So I tried to train both. I tried to train my little wrist movement so that I know and get those two points exactly lined up. Like this. And then I do this the other way around. Because this is different. Moving your wrist moving your lift to the your wrist to the left is different for me than moving to the right. I feel I feel better at moving to the right than to the left. It's just maybe that's for everyone, maybe that's just me. And then after I do this, you can do bigger flicks like this. And kinda start knowing where your where the end of your wrist accuracy is. Which is mine is about this, this is this is my max range right there. This is like my best accuracy right there. And then you can do you can do arm movements if you want to. Like the the points points to points. So that you'll always be able to do good 180s like this. For example, this is a good one. See, I'm really good at left one and then right one. It's not good. Left is easy, right? I don't get it that often. So you just train this. This is another another training that I do. <clears throat> it feels stupid, but when you're gonna be in a game and someone starts shooting to your left behind you, you'll be able to just instantly move and be able to shoot him. That's actually pretty interesting. I've never really considered mechanically what my aim wrist was doing. Only ever thought of it from in-game DPI sense. Yeah, a lot of people are like it's just aiming is just there's a point I gotta aim at the head and then I shoot but when this happens when you see someone there's a lot of different things that happen first like I said you if you're pre-aiming at the good are you pre-aiming the good spot are you pre-aiming on the ground and oh you see someone and then you try to flick to it so you could get better at aiming that's already something that make will make you miss less bullets um then after pre-aiming, you'll see, um, after you pre-aim, there's going to be just recognizing the target. So how, how long it's going to take for you to recognize that target. This is something you can get better at, and it will let you kill people faster than others. Um, I will post this on YouTube after. And after this, you have, um, after you reacted to your target, there's how much you flicked. So if the target's close, it's going to be just that wrist movement that I've been talking to you about. This guy. Let's say, oh, I react to a target. It's just that little wrist movement. If the target is far, I have to go do a big movement, a big arm movement, and then a little wrist movement. And then after this, I need to start clicking right. So, should I start clicking right after I'm on the target? Should I start clicking when I'm moving? I usually do it when moving. I do everything when moving. I do, I start. I start aiming, I move, and I start shooting at the same time. Like this. See? And everything goes together. And then you crouch, and then you, you lean. And all these things, you have to train them individually. All of this needs to be trained. This needs to be trained. So you can do 180s like that. So you can aim at windows better. Just shooting at a wall, <clears throat> and knowing what is... How to get into a point, always. You gotta, you gotta train this. 
Turning while crouching is easier. Turning with a compass is easier. Turning without a compass is harder. See, this is without a comp. It's hard. Uh, the comp is a little bit faster. The crouch is even easier. I'm just gonna run away from this guy. He's being annoying. <clears throat> and all these things needs to be trained individually if you want to get better at something. You can't just be running. If you if you're just running around and then just trying to shoot people and get better at that, you'll get better, but way less efficiently than if you're actually doing those little. Little wrist movements, let's say. That's it. Sounds stupid, but just do this 10 minutes per day, and you'll get way better. You'll get more used to your mouse. You'll be able to move around the map better. <clears throat> so this is this is how I train on um, full auto. And then what I try to do when I'm in game, the thing that I got the moment I got way better at full autoing is when I, I started doing this. All I did is I started picking up a gun. I used to, back in the days, you used to just single fire everything. Um, <laughs> what's up, boomer? Uh, I just started using full auto. I saw someone use it, you just full autoing everything. So I just like, yeah, whatever. I'll full auto everything. I'll just focus on that. So I was just taking my time. I'd see a target, far, medium range, whatever. This guy, whatever. And I did this, and I started missing all my bullets. But then you do this, and then if you if you just focus on that like for a week, just controlling your your target, controlling your crosshair, and yeah, you'll get you'll get better way faster than just like not thinking about anything and like oh this is a hard target I can't pull out of this and then you start single firing. It, it doesn't matter if you if you lose in a game. If you want to get better, this, this target's super far, so okay I'm gonna. Falota. And then I didn't hit any bullets, but I got better. But if I keep doing this, I'll get better at controlling the AK. And then when a, a target is actually close, I'm gonna miss zero bullets, and I'm gonna double tap him in the head. So this is this is how I got really good at at full autoing. Um. Another thing that you need to to check in this game is like this this little crosshair that you can change. Um, I used to use the dot a lot. I used to love the dot. The problem with the dot is that it's, it's, I think the dot is one of the best, but now they made it too big. See, like uh, it used to be like a quarter of this, and now sometimes from from close from long range, like you start aiming someone from long range, and then. It's all his fucking head, and then you don't know where you're aiming anymore, and then when you're moving, it's hard. So I changed for this, so you can actually have that little little, little dot in the middle. And for some reason, I just I'm able to control my my recoil better if I have if I have uh, that little cross here. Another thing that you need to keep in mind when you full auto is. Um, the left and right movements of your of of the end, but this is like the hardest thing. A lot of people either use dot or this. Some people use this one. This one is good for like aiming at headshots. I don't know this this one like you, you're gonna focus on heads while doing this, but I, I don't really like it. Um, so yeah, the other thing that you need to be aware of when you start full loading is uh, the left and right movement of your. Of your uh, of your crosshair, and this is like the hardest thing. The horizontal recoil in this game is brutal. This is why sometimes you just want to do burst to reset your aim. But this this really comes down to just practice. I I've thought about <coughs> multiple ways of practicing this, but none of them are are good. It's just literally just you get a full auto in games and get used to just controlling left and right recoil. Um, okay, one one thing that I didn't think about, that I didn't talk about in PUBG, there's a there's a mechanic that is that you need to keep in mind when you shoot that they've added in patch 1.0. And I'll show you what it is. It's uh, when you shoot, there's a bigger um, 
The first bullet kick is bigger than the second bullet kick. If you start spraying a wall, you'll see it instantly. So let's say I start making a wall. Oops, I need to reload. Just gonna, gonna make little patterns on the wall. So you can you can definitely see it. See this first bullet kick? This wasn't there before, but now it is here. Slight talent with the sub. What up? Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Thanks for the support. So yeah, so this little this little jump right there um makes it so that if someone's head peeking you, you'll probably won't be able to kill him with your first two bullets. <laughs> Kick Dill in the shins for me. <laughs> Will do. So let's say someone's head peeking you, um, which means it's just his head appearing. Let's say uh, he, he's. Uh, let's say someone's crouched behind the barrel. Let's say someone's crouched behind uh, this barrel, those barrels, right? And you start aiming the barrels, and you start shooting. See how my aim goes up? If I just re, if I just pull down, normally it's just gonna do this. It goes up a little bit. So there's two ways of counteracting. Um, the fact that your crosshair is gonna move up a lot. The first way would be simply when you when you aim, you aim a little bit lower than your head. Instead of aiming head level, when you know like a mid range target like that, you're gonna you're gonna aim just a little bit under, so that when you shoot, it instantly goes back up to the head. All right. A second way of doing it is just simply not caring about it. Just start shooting and then recoil. And then you just start recoiling. Should control the recoil like this. You don't really care about it. You just pull down. By instincts. A lot of people just use instincts and just shoot. And the last way of doing it that is I don't think possible, but I mean I guess it's technically possible, is pulling very hard the first shot and then pulling down. A bit slower after. Oops. Start shooting and then you pull down. But I, I don't think that's possible in most scenarios. So I would just recommend to aim like neck level approximately. And you just shoot people like that. Alright, now let's go on to let's say single tapping long range. This is basically the same thing. You'll want to get better at pre-aiming and everything. Uh, let's get a sight. Let's get a 6x for example. So obviously in PUBG, crouching, I didn't say that, but pr crouching makes your aim way better. I don't know if you can see my crosshair right now, but it, it shrinks when you crouch makes your recoils more tight and it makes your makes it easier for to snipe also with SKS and DMRs. Um yeah so most important thing right there is for long range in PUBG is probably just gonna be about peaking. So let's say you're behind a three like this and then you gotta peak just little little movements like that. Right, because if you do this, you're probably just gonna get killed. This is the main reason why people get killed. They just hard, they just white peel like that, and then they get killed. So you need to be able to just do little peaks like that, and then shoot. And how to get the the way to get better with DMRs is to not be scared of just shooting your gun. If you're if you're scared of shooting very slow and waiting for the reset, you're gonna probably hit your shots, but you're not really gonna get better at it. If you can just like, you see a target, you just start shooting at it, and then you're gonna get used to the gun. You do this for the for the SKS, you get used to the SKS, you do this for the DM, for the SLR, you'll get used to the DMR. But PUBG is, PUBG is interesting. The way they made the mechanic work with bullets and sway and everything, sometimes there's just no way of hitting your bullets. And it, it, it long range really just comes down to practice. Just how many times you shoot your gun. 
if you shot like a million times with the SKS, you're gonna be better than someone who shot a hundred thousand times with it, and there's just no way around it. You can't really. Yeah, sometimes you just you just lost. It just doesn't work. Um, there's one way of training it, which would be going with your friend into this training ground or in a custom game, and then you can train. Um, I can't really demonstrate it right now because obviously I don't have a friend right now in the game. Um, but let's say you're you're going at you put your friend at that 100 meter mark and you just make him run. You make him run left and you make him run right. Just like this, so that you, because these targets are way too slow, right? So what you want to do? Oh, this is very annoying. Training fucking ground. So you just let your your friend just run, and then you shoot, and you're gonna get used to. Uh, oh, Jesus fuck! You're gonna get used to. Um, uh, the bullet drop. And also how fast your bullet goes. So you let you see a moving target, and then you shoot a moving target. This is this is just it should just have a butt running left and right. These targets are way too slow to actually do anything. Maybe the farthest one will train a bit, but yeah, they need to put these at like running speed. I don't know. It's I mean. It can work a little bit, you see? Like you have to you have to aim a little bit more left of the target. Just like these one you can just shoot straight, but you can do this with a DMR, you can do this with a sniper. You just let your friend run and you shoot behind them. I mean in front of them. And then you check how long it takes for your bullet to hit, and then if you need to go Maybe in front, or maybe in, in the back. Wouldn't be hard. I've checked the targets, and they don't match with a single movement type in the game. Yeah, I mean, it's... Just, I don't know. Something that they need to implement. At, at least those targets are good to, to practice, like, how high you gotta shoot to hit your target, right? And I would recommend just not using any attachments. Literally, just don't use an attachment for a while. And then use an and then start using a, maybe just a cheek pad, and then use it fully decked after that. So di just so you get used to um, <clears throat> all the different types, because you're not gonna have an SKS fully decked every game, right? Especially in competitive. So if you get better with no attachments, that means when you actually get attachments, you'll be you'll be good at it. If you wanna watch what attachments are good, I did a video about it on. Um, my first episode is about attachments, so yeah, that pretty much wraps what I wanted what I wanted to talk about. So if I uh, if I uh, go over them again, it's basically tr you have to you have to put everything in little blocks. Like so, if you want a full auto, there's not only the things you need to talk to think about is pre-aiming. You need to be able to move your wrist correctly. You move, need to move your, your arm correctly. There's multiple ways of training them. I think CS:GO is a great way, like I like I showed you guys, to train it. Um, then, just literally just going into a game like that, taking a an AK and just pulling down, just shooting at at a wall. And, and SKS is good too. If you want to get better at using the SKS. How much you need to control it. And uh, yeah, the thing that helped me the most with aim in, in PUBG, it's funny, but it's in CSGO, where you just do that aim training and then you just flick to targets. And it's gonna make you way more, uh, way better with, with moving your mouse around, right? Alright, do you have any questions? Do you have anything you want to go over or... Before I, I end this video? Alright, well if no one has questions, I can uh, you can ask them on YouTube or... Uh, 
message me on Discord.